Hello everybody. It is my pleasure to be speaking to you today at OpenJS World and I'll be talking about unlocking high performing teams with open source. So let me first start by introducing myself. My name is Tracy Miranda. I'm the executive director at the Continuous Delivery Foundation and the recurring theme in my career has always been open source. So I've worked with the Jenkins community and before that was heavily involved uh, in the Eclipse open source community. So in short, suffice to say, I love open source and communities. So for today, uh, we'll be answering the question, uh, what does it mean to be a high performing team? And really, what, what does it take? So to as a starting point to answer that, uh, I'm going to start with the proposition that Today, every business is a software business, or at least is under tremendous pressure to transform itself into a, a technology organization. And continuous delivery is key to this. So delivering new software features faster while making sure that your services are solid and secure is the key differentiator um, for almost every business today. And so we can think about continuous delivery as being critical to how teams deliver value. Um, so when we think about um, those benefits to an organization, uh, picture an organization that can deliver new features faster than its competition. Or picture an organization that can pivot to respond to industry and world events or picture an organization that can take advantage of fast feedback to build a deep relationship with its users. So these are some of the benefits of continuous delivery. And it's not just at the organizational level. It also helps a lot with your processes uh, and with your teams. This is my favorite part. Um, like these processes help create a high trust culture and most importantly, uh, reduce burnout, which at a time when we have so much to contend with, um, it, it would be really nice um, if certainly in our professional lives, we um, can do whatever we can to reduce stress and burnout um, when it comes to delivering software. Okay, so what is continuous delivery? It's essentially a software development practice in which teams release software changes to users safely quickly and sustainably. I'll talk about a, a little bit more um, how this has changed recently. We have been delivering software for a long time, um, but the rise of microservices and cloud native architectures has uh, caused a corollary rise in continuous delivery practices. And continuous delivery um, includes uh, the practice of continuous integration which is, uh, as many of you may be familiar, the practice of merging all developer working copies to a shared mainline several times a day. And before we go further in looking at this, I want to um, position three things that are often used in a slightly interchangeable and confusing manner, especially if you're new to this space, you will often hear people talk about Agile and then continuous delivery or CICD, uh, and DevOps. Uh, while there is overlap, each one tends to have a distinct focus. So for instance, Agile is focused on uh, processes. And yeah, hat tip to this great uh, blog post from uh, synopsis.com. Um, and then when it comes to DevOps, DevOps is an organizational and cultural movement that aims to increase continuous delivery. Um, so as a result, you see it will focus on culture. Uh, and then continuous delivery uh, focuses on the tools and automation, almost seeing that as a way to drive um, culture change. So we have seen uh, in specific cases, you have great tools can really be um, that point that helps um, push your, your team's culture in, in the right direction. And so for the rest of the talk, I'll be talking from that perspective of um, kind of tools as that uh, basis for, for driving change around software delivery. Okay. So um, I start every talk by telling everyone how lucky we are in this day and age uh, when we're delivering more software than ever. 
that we have this incredible research um, around what it takes to build and scale high-performing technology organizations. And this comes from the Accelerate book, uh, which if you have not checked it out, I highly, highly recommend it, uh, written by Nicole Forsgren, Jess Humble, and Jean Kim. Um, and it's the partner companion to the State of DevOps uh, reports, uh, which they ran for a few years as well. And my favorite quote from that whole book, uh, and this is from Nicole, where software delivery is an exercise in continuous improvement. And our research shows that year over year, the best keep getting better and those who fail to improve fall further and further behind. So yeah, uh, newsflash, standing still is just not an option uh, in when it comes to modern technology development. So, um, but the book then goes on to break down what it does take um, to build and scale your organization in this way. And these are in the form of 24 specific capabilities to drive improvement. Uh, so that's a, a lot of things to, to manage all at the same time. But I want to focus in on the first eight. Uh, so numbers one to eight over on, on one side. And these are specifically uh, what we call the continuous delivery capability. So pulling together like version control, automated deployment, continuous integration, security, um, these all come together to, to form a fundamental basis um, of improving how your team can be high performing. And as you're making improvements in this space, um, the other thing well spent spelt out is how you go about measuring your success to see um, what you're, how to track your progress. So the book talks about um, the four metrics, so two on speed and two on stability. Um, unlike other metrics, um, these are super important because you know they not only kind of fall in this domain of like IT metrics, uh, but they are also business metrics. And this kind of peer-reviewed research has shown that they correlate uh, with high-performing teams and good business outcomes. So on the speed side, it talks about how frequently is your team deploying software? Is it daily, weekly, monthly, yearly? Um, and then what is your lead time um, from the time you push to that change gets to production? So those are your two speed measures. And then when it comes to stability, um, you can think about it as, you know, how many failures are you having per the number of deployments? And then secondly, how long does it take you to restore services? So uh, what is that time you, it will take you to recover when something goes wrong? So um, we have um, this great book, Accelerate, and we have all these amazing benefits. So we kind of know the why and we know the how of continuous delivery, but adoption is still um, not as widespread as you might think. And that's where um, we have the Continuous Delivery Foundation coming in. So there's about three things um, the way I see that prevents people from uh, being as far down in their software delivery journey as they'd like. So one is this rise of microservices and cloud native technologies. It's an amazing game changer. It allows us to scale incredibly, but at the same time, it's a completely different paradigm of you know, lots of environments, distributed um, code bases, and it leaves teams with a lot to contend with. You know, it's just an explosion of environments. Um, and that, that has in turn also led to a, a lot of tools emerging in this place. So it's a very fragmented landscape. It's very difficult um, to figure out how to put together an end-to-end -end solution. And finally, uh, change is hard. We all have limited amounts of change that as people or as organizations, we can do all at the same time. Uh, so it's very tricky to, to kind of evolve um, our, our tooling and, and get away from technical debt. So in response to these kind of challenges, the Continuous Delivery Foundation was set up back in 2019, uh, partly to nurture open source projects, uh, and I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about these later, 
But in general, we see um, us as having this wider mission of we want to improve the world's capacity to deliver software with security and speed. And um, there's a saying we have in technology that the future is here, it's just not evenly distributed. And this is definitely the case in, uh, when it comes to software delivery. Uh, but what we have seen is we believe uh, the power of open source collaboration and use of technology can incredibly help level the playing field and make it easier for folks to, to get better and better uh, in this way. So today I want to talk to you about um, three ways uh, the Continuous Delivery Foundation is approaching uh, helping the industry and helping people who want to go on this journey to becoming high-performing teams. So the first thing is uh, around driving continuous delivery and adoption. And we approach this with a number of different initiatives. So we have a continuous delivery landscape uh, for any of you folks who are familiar with uh, like the Cloud Native Computing Foundation, uh, they have this amazing the CNCF landscape, also so, sort of known as the hellscape and in, in the most affectionate way. But what we're trying to do here is zoom in specifically on software delivery technologies. Sometimes we fall into this trap of thinking it's CI and CD, so it's just integration and deployment when really there is a lot more to it. Um, you t to deliver software, you need to get your testing right. You need to um, have potential analytics and, and monitoring and security is super important. So the idea here um, with this, we're putting together this landscape to try and give people first a high level view of all the different options in the space, open source or not. And, and this is um, all open to contributions. So if you see a tool missing, um, please do submit a pull request. So another initiative uh, I want to touch upon is that we have an end user council. Uh, these are for folks who are working in organizations who use uh, continuous delivery solutions, are trying to put together end-to-end -end solutions and making them work um, for their use cases. So they meet, the group meets monthly to um, have these in-depth focused discussions on specific topics. So for example, we have a lot of folks from the fintech space and they will meet to you know, talk about the specific governance and compliance regulations they need to meet with their software pipelines. Um, but we also have wider discussions around developer productivity or measuring success. And we're also looking to help drive the direction of tool development. So uh, the people who are using the tool can give feedback to the people who are creating the tools. And one thing you'll see on um, our website is that group has put together an NGSA council plan where they also map out an editorial calendar of the key topics that everybody sort of agreed on. Hey, these are things we want to have deeper discussions. We want to spend time on it. It's not uh, like they're in-depth discussions and it will take time to sort of work out what we're doing, compare notes with other people in the industry and also figure out where we should be improving. Um, so you can uh, take a look at some of the resources coming out of that group on our website. So uh, going back to um, the three areas I'm highlighting, the second one is around open source projects uh, in this space. So the CDF launched uh, with four key projects, um, Jenkins, uh, which I'm sure many of you have heard of and have used uh, as used by uh, practically everybody uh, in different ways. Then we've also got um, Spinnaker, which is the incredible technology that came out of Netflix. And then we have the newer projects uh, in the cloud native space. And I like to look at it this way from an adoption perspective. So a lot of folks are, are using Jenkins and have been for many years. Um, and Spinnaker has also got some uh, great adoption. Um, and then on the other hand, as we have cloud native technologies and more people moving over to microservices, we have um, projects like Jenkins X and Tecton, which are focused on um, building on Kubernetes and providing options um, for, for how you can build your CI and CD pipelines and have them, you know, uh, 
just with a lot of scalability and you know taking full advantage of um, all the benefits of being in a distributed environment. And one of the ways we like to think about um, our open source projects, so like we have them at every end of the adoption curve, um, but we also try to push our projects to help tie to these best practices or to these capabilities. Because when we look at the list of you know, things that the research says we need to get better at, there's a lot of things on that list. And um, we have to ask ourselves, is this something that software tools can help us with? Like, tools won't solve all your problems and they're certainly not gonna bring around a changing your culture or making your team better, but are there some things we can trust to tools so that we can focus um, on the harder things that take uh, longer to, to bring about change? And I would argue, yes, um, there's a whole set of things where if we can have tools that are kind of lend ourselves to more opinionated workflows, they can set us off on this golden path. So in particular, with tools like Jenkins X and Tecton, um, we're really looking at it that way of saying, can we set out with these tools that encourage best practices by default? Okay, so moving on to the third point. Um, so first, we talked about general continuous delivery adoption. Second, we talk about projects. But the third side I like to see as the, the community side. So what can we do to make this continuous improvement journey easier? Uh, talked about earlier change being hard and um, we're always looking for ways to make it easier for people to uh, bring about that change in the organization and uh, have other folks to talk over some of their decisions and choices and see if they're on the right path. And one of the other ways uh, we like to approach this is saying, how can we simplify things for the whole industry? How can we make solutions easier, especially when it comes to this explosion of tools and choices? And uh, there's a strong set of folks who share this idea that we need to promote interoperability. We need to have standardized building blocks. We shouldn't be reinventing the wheel and we should really drive for common APIs and metadata. Um, and that will kind of improve uh, the rate of adoption and the way the industry can and, can adopt end-to-end -end solutions and beginners can get started uh, and things like that. So to that end, one of our most active special interest groups is the SIG Interoperability. It meets every two weeks and we have great conversations where we're trying to bring people together, trying to find common ground and um, it's spinning off quite a few initiatives. For, for instance, uh, we have a, a focus group, um, a special interest group on events in CICD saying, okay, let's standardize how we talk about the events you get from a CD pipeline and um, let's, let's see if we can drive for different tools to all adopt the same strategy. So it gives us these building blocks to build upon. And similarly, the Tecton project, uh, if you take a look at that, it, it's got some great building blocks um, for anybody looking at continuous delivery in a cloud native space. And one of the other kind of initiatives that sort of emerged as super important when we started those discussions in the interoperability group was this around terminology. Um, even as you get started and you start moving between different tools or looking at different tools, you'll find that different tools will use different terms for the same thing, or they'll use a word in a different way and the scope is, is slightly different. So we've tried to capture that as well in what we call our Rosetta Stone for continuous delivery. Uh, and it's it's a page in, in GitHub, which it kind of compares and contrasts the terms and it tries to drive some clarity um, around these terms so we can be we can make people's life easier uh, when they're looking at and evaluating different options um, for their, their continuous delivery. So that was kind of a, a whistle stop look at the ways the Continuous Delivery Foundation is trying to uh, bring about this change. So striving for continuous delivery adoption, promoting and the sustainability of open source projects that help with best practices, and then just bringing together the communities in ways um, that we can make life better for everybody through interoperability. Um, 
so I want to sum up when we asked ourselves in the beginning, you know, what does it mean to be a high performing software delivery team? Um, the accelerate book spells that out for us. We need to um, continuously improve in these practices and we measure that against how quickly we're deploying software and how safely we're doing it and how well we can recover when things go wrong. While we're trying to make those changes, uh, microservices and cloud native technologies have drastically changed the game. So we're having to evolve um, while, while things are changing under our feet. And change is super hard. Um, so it's something we have to contend with, but the option for staying still you know, doesn't really exist for any kind of modern or evolving uh, organization. But nevertheless, uh, open source can come to the rescue. So uh, in a couple of ways we can think about this. One, to take a look at open source technologies, anything from Jenkins to Tekton to Spinnaker and some of our other newer projects. And these help make the most uh, of modern software delivery so you're not reinventing the wheel or maintaining software um, that already exists out there. And then secondly, just being part of open source con communities who are undergoing the same journey uh, really helps make life easier for everybody. And in that vein, I want to finish it off by saying, um, after OpenJS World, we also have our annual event at CD Foundation. So that is CDCon just around the corner. And if um, anything I've said today has piqued your interest, I would say it's uh, one of the best places to come meet the community. We have a lot of interactive sort of birds of a feather sessions as well as talks from experts and people doing their best uh, on this journey. So it's an amazing place to meet folks, uh, learn things, and also have fun. Uh, a very welcoming community. So we'd love to welcome you to join in with us. And uh, I'll leave it there. Please uh, check out our resources on the website or let me know if you have any questions. Uh, but I look forward to welcome you to join the community building the future of continuous delivery. Thank you very much.